This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody to the call. This is our it is our first call in April, which is so surprising because we're halfway through April, but it's a long month. <laughs> so and March was long. So here we are, um, our Magic and Miracles tribe, and we have a special guest speaker. Mark Kapla is joining us today from Daytona Beach, and he has put a shirt on for us. We were chatting a little bit before the call. And Mark, you live on the beach in Daytona, right? So, um, yep. So we have um, we have Mark here um, with, a sh with a nice Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> He's all dressed up for the occasion, and it's come as you are. It really is come as you are. All right, so um, I really would love just to give this call mostly to Mark and to us just having a conversation um, and hearing Mark's story. But Mark, just to give you a little intro as to as to what we are, we are we call ourselves. I've I've named it the Magic and Miracles Tribe, and um, we started out. I, is it four or five years? I, I'm feeling it. This is our fifth year, and other people have come in now. But this is this is the this is our base group that is kind of kind of with has been together, and we're connected. And and as such, we've evolved as a group into something different than when we started. When we started, we did a lot of energy clearing, um, we did a lot of healing work together, identifying blocks that were keeping us from creating what we want in our lives. And over the years, we've, we've really made advances in our ability to create our lives consciously. And we're not the penultimate, of course, we still have lots to learn. But we've evolved, I think, largely out of that need to clear so much and really are more talking about embodiment now and, and what who do we need to be in order to create what we want to create in our lives and to create those magic and miracles when you partner with the universe. So Claire, of course, <laughs> has talked about you often and we have are fascinated that it just doesn't rain on you. If you decide it's not going to rain where you are, it just doesn't I, rain. <laughs> I, I told that I told that story a little earlier today, and there's another one that goes along with this. That I don't realize how crazy that sounds until I'm talking to somebody that doesn't know me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and and. In a, in a spiritual group like this, you'd have those. You'd have those people around you that have experienced you. And then you have that outlying group that come and go. But they just see things. They don't actually get to experience all. Um, multiple times in my life, I've heard something along this line. We know he sounds crazy, but five years from now, when you realize everything he said come true, you'll just realize, just listen to what he said. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay. Um, and, you know, on the spiritual end, it's simply because everything is a potential that's in the ether. And if you listen to the small, still voice, you're, you can access the potential. And if you live in the moment, which is where all access happens, so it's, it's what comes next. You know, in the world we live in, we've been so manipulated to do and go and everything else. And when you realize the only thing you have ever been able to do is what comes next that's it yeah. you've never been able to do something in five minutes ever all right so i explain to people in my life i've really gotten to the point where i realized i only do one thing that's to the best of my ability and then i repeat mm. <laughs> i like that I like okay yeah now it doesn't mean it's correct I might learn something today that changes a perspective of me tomorrow, but it is to the best of my ability. And I do that because I'm selfish. Um, I've played the other way. I tell people, once you've been hit with enough two by fours with spikes in them, you realize <laughs> it doesn't have to get that bad before I change. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Okay. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. it's, it's how we learn, right? I mean. Absolutely. So that, that process of, um, so <clears throat> a little background, all right. Yeah, we'd love to hear your story. <laughs> and I'm okay. just, I asked the ladies to bring some questions just in case, but well, good. you may, yeah. you may answer yeah. them all. So, <laughs> okay. 
um, yes, if you have any questions, um, in my business, I tell people, um, if at any time you have a question, ask your question. All right, that's, all right. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can, if you can see this, all right? Um, if at all possible, I'd like you to see my eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the light on here and I want you to see my eyes. Okay. Um, can you tell I have two different color eyes? Yes. Mm. Can you tell I have a teardrop pupil? Yes, yeah. I see that. All right. Now, I was born with this. Um, when I was born, when they did the testing and everything, people flew in from all over the world because mathematically, these cannot happen. Um, simple math. Um, I was raised by a mechanical electrical engineer, which is another reason I am what I am. I perceive numbers or math or volume differently, okay? But as far as the eyes go, um, the chances of having two different color eyes is roughly one in 500,000. The teardrop pupil is one in 750,000. Mathematically, it comes out to about one in 32 billion. Modern science says in the species that we consider ourselves part of, there's been 90 billion in the history of our species. So when you hear somebody talking about being one in a million, I'm actually three in a species. Now imagine knowing this your whole life. Every time you brush your teeth and you look in the mirror, you'll realize you're never going to meet somebody like you. That's how it began. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. On, on my first birthday, I drowned. I died on my first birthday. Now, most people don't know this, but you do. You've heard of it, near-life experience or near-death experience, right? What does this actually mean? Um, when people have them, the one commonality afterwards is the people change. They literally become somebody they weren't before that. Why? So if you have somebody in your 20s or 30s or 40s, they come in and, and when they come back, they change every aspect of their life. Why? Okay. And I believe the reason is, is, is this. Inside of our DNA, there's a program that runs just before death. It has to do with a certain part of our body going oxygen to brevity. When this happens, your DNA runs a program and the program says there is no death. This is why when people pass over, they go <sighs> and then they pass over. When you realize on the molecular level, there is no death. Okay, that happened to me on my first birthday. How different would your world be right now if every minute of your entire existence, you knew there was no death, how different would you be right now? All yeah, right. I, I had a, not a near death experience, but I had a spontaneous out of body astral projection. And so it, cha uh, it literally changed my life. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Then we get to, um, my grandfather is still alive on my mother's side. Uh, my grandparents have been married for over 75 years. He is a 94-year-old Pentecostal minister, a fire and brimstone preacher. And uh, my grandmother is still alive. She is 97 years old. So um, I have that background of me. Uh, my grandfather is Pentecostal. I was raised in a fundamentalist, Bible-believing church. Everything that you think of it. And I tell people, I love, to the day I die, I will love that man that preached in that because he said this continuously don't ever trust what i tell you you got your own book study it yourself <laughs> guess what i did <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> all right challenge me in a way to say your life can be better challenge accepted all right and then in the verbiage of where we are as americans in 2022 at the age of 10 I knelt down in a gymnasium floor and I bowed my head and I accepted Jesus as my savior. So in metaphysics, for the very first time as a conscious entity, I reached out and I touched the ether. That was at the age of 10. I am now 55 years old. So since the only thing that we ever do is what comes next, I've just learned to play that game more understanding that, you know, 
as you as we all grow up, we learn things, right? It's no different. It's like everything else. We can make any choice of any experience we want. And people say, it's like, how did you get here? Simple. I made enough shitty choices. Okay. Now, I have never failed. I have successfully found a whole bunch of shit I'm never going to do again. Okay. That's not the same as failure. Right. I've discovered a whole bunch of things that I've discovered other things that I like better. Right. So in the energy realm that we're in, in metaphysics, um, and it's interesting because I woke up at a young age and I was challenged on the spiritual realm by people saying religion is what it is and there's a book and read it and study it. Okay. Now, no matter what level you're going to play this game at, it all comes down to the same thing. Whether you think it's a, a book or you think it's energy or you think that there's a God or a Jesus, whatever it is, it all comes back to the exact same thing. So um, in my world, I've explained it to people this way. If this is what you say you believe, live like this. The problem is people say, this is what I believe, and then they live like this. So if you live like you believe or change your belief system, as long as they match, you're going to be great. Way too many people are like this. And in doing so, I mean, it's like getting up every morning and beating yourself up with a baseball bat. Okay. So as long as these match, right, as long as they match, you'll realize it's different than if they don't. So as time has gone on and little things have come into my world as something I was unaware of, what do you do with it? Way too many people go, well, that was interesting, and then they let it go. I've been hit with enough two by fours with spikes in it that when something little comes out, I go, ooh. I look at it, and then I integrate that into me. If it was brought to me, I drew it to me because I had the desire for it. Yeah, all it is is a feedback system. So what is brought to me, I drew for my benefit. Okay, way too many people, stuff comes in and, you just, and they knock it to the side and it's like, yeah, you know, do you not realize since the very beginning of time, everything had to happen exactly the way it happened for that to present itself in front of you when it did. And you went, oh, that's nice and walk away. All right. Uh, my grandfather told me 40 years ago, when something comes into your, rap, your reality that you had nothing to do with, pay very close of attention because of what I just said. Everything had to line up exactly the way it was for it to come into your world at that moment. Stop and pay attention. People are thinking about what's happening tomorrow, what's happening next week, and they have no idea that you drew something to you for 20 years of thinking about it. And it presented itself to you right now, and you're worried about what you're going to have for lunch tomorrow. And you miss it. All right? So... Our whole life, we get to play a game, and we get to play any way we want. And here's the wild thing. You're inside of a bubble that's so unique that there's a spiritual battle going on over you. You've heard it your whole life, that there's a God and there's a devil. There's good and they're bad, and they're battling over your soul. You notice you've never heard the souls of the planet. No. Your so so if you've got this and you've got this and the battle has always been about you how freaking special are you all right this is a this is the reality that we live in okay you're god god's god woke up one morning and said you know i'd like to hear a joke the problem is he's heard every fucking punchline of every joke ever thought of so he had to separate himself into us so one day we can walk up, wake up, see something funny, go, ha, 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 and tell them a fucking joke. <laughs> it's all energy. Um, with what I do for a living, 2017, 2018, modern science proved your consciousness, which isn't necessarily what most people think it is. We can talk about that. But your consciousness is an energy that interacts with a field outside of itself. Most of us call it God. Tesla called it the ether. 
that energy returns a like energy back to us that creates the world that we walk into. This is modern science. This is the, the, the Hellrion Collider. This is modern science, okay? And 2,000 years ago, apparently there was a guy in the Middle East, which is weird because if you think about it, what are the chances of going into the Middle East now of grabbing a group of guys and their names are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Timothy? <laughs> wow, who would have thought, right? Um, <laughs> okay, but apparently there's this guy walking around Okay, and he said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell that mountain to be there. And apparently this guy had walked on the water, raised the dead, fed the poor, and healed the poor. What the hell was he talking about? Oh, that's right, quantum entanglement. Exactly what modern science is talking about today. It only took us 2,000 years to figure out what that <laughs> guy wandering around the Middle East was talking about a couple thousand years ago, but that's what it is. It's quantum entanglement. It's the fact that there is only one thing. It's what God is. It's everything. You can call it energy. You can whatever. But that's all that there is. Um, when you tell people you're raised by a mechanical electrical engineer, um, you ready? I'm going to give you my opening line for what I do for a living, okay? Okay. Um, <sighs> um, the name of my business is Magnet Rocks. I make magnetic jewels. All right. When somebody walks up in front of my booth, this is how I explain myself. My name is Mark Kaplan. I've been in business for 10 years. I have a lifetime breakage guarantee because I know exactly what I do for a living. I have a 30 day unconditional guarantee because you have absolutely no idea what I do for a living. <laughs> I'm, num I'm number one on Google. If you Google medical terms like magnet, uh, uh, neuropathy, pain relief jewelry, or fibromyalgia pain relief jewelry, or jewelry terms like magnetic fine jewelry, magnetic crystal jewelry, burstone jewelry. I'm number one in Google. All right. And I was a professional magician. <laughs> That's my opening line, okay? So, <laughs> um, I get to work in, we think of it as the energy of healing or the, 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 the arts of healing. But there really is only energy. Okay. And so when I talk to people, one of the things you have to realize, they tell us there's like 7 billion of us, but the reality is we're inside of a bubble. So if you take your fingers out and you spin around in a circle, picture yourself in that bubble. Okay. You've never been outside that bubble. You'll never be outside that bubble. And your world has happened inside of that bubble. Nothing that's ever happened outside of that bubble is in your world unless you think it is. Now, when you start to realize that everything in the background outside of that bubble is like watching a movie, it gives you something to respond to. Here's the kicker. Whatever it is you respond to, you're going to get back. Why? Because it's a movie. But when you gave it the energy, you gave it the energy to reinteract with you again. So people talk about how life is a circle or things seem to repeat. It's only because something happened. You gave it energy. And in doing so, you gave it permission to come back around and interact with you again. Why? Because you gave it the energy to do that. This is why shadow work is about bringing up the old, being the observer, reclaiming your energy, letting the experience go by, and then it doesn't repeat. Why? Because the movie can't repeat without your energy. We give it the energy. So I explain it this way to people. If you're going through your world, your daily world, and you want something to repeat, all right, there's a trick to it. Okay? Everything is energy. So I do it, and I can do it here because there's nobody around. <laughs> when I do this, everybody in about a block will jump uh, because of the energy. So let's see if I can get you to feel it. What do you use 10 hours away from here? So let's see. Um, when there's something you would like to repeat. So this, where we are right now talking about this is a perfect example because this is where my existence is going is, is this is what I do with a professional talk. So when something like this comes up, I roll the energy up, I feel it getting up and I go, I love this. And then just walk away. Forget you ever did it. Forget, just let it go by. Okay. Now, 
if you guys are familiar with the secret, which I believe you are, yeah. you'll realize two times in the New Testament, it said, ask, believe, receive. So if you believe something, how many times do you ask for it? One time. You only order your dinner once <laughs> in a restaurant. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Now, that seems oversimplified, except for the realize the way it works. And the way it works is math. God is the, is the master mathematician. Every single thing is math. And here's a little heads up. Um, once our modern science figures out that we're using the wrong math, okay, we're using base 10 math. When they figure out it's base 12 math, pi is an even number. All right. Okay. So when you really you know how I feel about math, I cannot believe <laughs> you are talking math. <laughs> So I just, I throw this out here because this is one of those things that people roll their eyes at, but when they announce it, people go, how did you know that? Yeah, I don't. Um, now, the reason I say that is, is everything is changing. Okay. We've won what's happening. It just has to be played out. So if to talk about it on a three dimensional we're, if we're playing human beings and we think that there's life and death and, and we're playing this, um, there's been a book called the Bible. It was the number one book printed on the planet for the last 2,000 years. Most people have heard about it. And uh, it tells a story about the fact of us destroying ourselves at about 2,000. Okay? Somehow we chose to not do that. So energetically wise, we made the choice to stay. All right? Here's the kicker. There was 2,000 years of stuff built up to do this. Once we chose to stay, now we have to unwind what's been placed. Okay? We can't just flip a switch and make it go away. Why? Because this stuff has been being put into place for thousands of years. All right? So with what's happening right now, the great thing about it is nothing has changed. Nothing. Every single thing you hear every single day has always been going on. You know what's changed? You hearing about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Why is that important? Because we change it with our consciousness. So when you hear something you never knew, what do you decide to do? And when you realize that the consciousness is all there is, you can make anything, anything you want, by this. I tell people, when you learn to control what happens between here's, you are the rulers of your world. Because everything responds to you. Everything. Remember, your consciousness goes out, interacts with God, comes back, lays the path you walk into. So what you're doing between these actually creates what you are walking into every moment of your existence. We are doing it. Okay? So once I realized that by reprogramming what happens between these, all of a sudden I realized I can control all of this because it's happening inside my bubble. So for each of you, you've realized on good days, what happens? Good stuff. When you're having bad days or rough days, what happens? Bad or rough stuff. It matches your vibration. Okay. Um, we've been told for a long time, if you get up in the morning and you stub your toe, go back to bed. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. Stop. Reset yourself and then start back up. And we've all experienced it. You get up, something goes wrong before you know it. You got to stop for gas because you're out of gas. You hit every red light, blah, 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 blah. And, and it's simply a return of our energy. Right. Um, so it all comes back to this because every one of us are living in a different world. We've created it for our benefit, right? We're a spiritual entity having an experience that's all unique to us. The thing is, is we don't know who us is. All right. Um, if what we think of as metaphysics or what the Bible says or any of the old teachings, whatever it is we are is as old as God. All right. So if we're playing the part of the human being and the idea of reincarnation, 
All right. If we're having multiple experiences, that's who I am. The thing is, is I think I'm a 55 year old male. So who am I? I have no idea because I am everything I've ever seen, heard, done, felt, smelt, taste, touch, experience in my entire experience. That is who I am. Not this 55 years, everything that I am. And we can access that because it's in our Akash, which is us. Right? So if you have an experience, if you've ever had an experience, it's yours. You've earned that. It's yours. You can go back in and discover what it is that you already know from what we think of as a previous life. It's just energy. It's just energy. Right? So my big thing for people is be okay in your own head. As long as you're okay in your own head, man, you're rocking it. All right? But if you're not okay in your head, you're in your living hell. Okay? Because we do it. Now, um, how did I get to this point? I drove truck for eight and a half years. I have listened to thousands and thousands of books on audio. I'm audio. Some are visual. I'm audible. Okay? And since our school system doesn't teach audible, it teaches visual. I did not learn to read till I was in third grade. It was not until ninth grade where I, I went to nine schools in 12 years. There's a whole setup there. Um, if you were to challenge yourself as a, as a spirit coming into an existence, tell yourself, let's go to nine schools in 12 years, non-military, so you have nobody around you like you, just to go, oh, that's a nice shitty way to start your life, right? Let's you are going to challenge you early, right? But in ninth grade, I had a teacher the very first day of school go, I know what your problem is, and we're going to fix it this year. And before I graduated ninth grade, I was reading 650 words a minute with 100% comprehension. My brain produces neural pathways differently than others. And it's taken me a while to figure out, you know, who we are, you are you, and it's unique to you. So learning who I am to become the best me I can be. Why? Um, because you guys are me. There is no separation. Um, when science broke it down and went, if you took everything that was, okay, now we got to go back to this because this is the way my brain works. You remember being young and being in school when they first started telling you about science and there's an atom and then they show you a picture of a circle, right? And you've got an electron and a neutron and it spins around and, and I'm looking at that going, bullshit. As a young man, I understood math. Bullshit. Okay. If what they said there was true, that means you could take everything that is, everything that is. And if you remove the nothing, it would fit in a sugar cube. Let that sink in. Okay. There is no separation. <laughs> I mean, none. No separation. That's what I believe we're here to play the game of. And we can do it, and you can't do it wrong. You know, if you do it right or you do it wrong, guess what? You die. <laughs> okay? People will have 60 years of life and spend 60 years having a shitty time. They die. 60 years of having a blast. They die. Which one of those would you rather be? Okay? Okay. Um, I'll put it uh, this way. I'm walking down the uh, beach one day and the little voice in my head um, says to me, um, if you were offered one wish, what would it be? Well, understand when stuff like that comes up, I know who's talking to me, right? So it took me a couple of days and finally said, okay, I got my wish. And this is my wish. If I could have one wish, it would be this, to have more fun. That's it. Now, when you realize that we're speaking a language that casts spells, to have more of something means what? You already have to be having it. Okay? And if you're having fun, you're healthy. You know how I know? Because if you weren't healthy, you wouldn't be having fun. You have plenty of money. The kids are fine. You're having a good time, right? If you weren't, you wouldn't be having fun. Fun is a side effect of balance. Okay? Okay, so if you can simply have fun now, 
after practicing it for years, and I half kiddingly people tell people after decades of practicing it, I am this close to getting it right. Okay, so this is close. Um, but what I've really realized by playing this game long enough is I needed this information. What is fun right here? What is this energy of fun? Because you feel energy right here. Okay, because people say I'm going to have fun and then they lock it into doing something. I have fun when I'm at the baseball game, when I'm doing something I like. That's incorrect. Fun is an energy that we place ourselves in. So after playing that energy game long enough, I realized, oh, I can simply hold that energy of fun. Well, what do you think my world's like? If that's the energy you held all the time. I can tell you, your world is ridiculous. You can't even ask him how he is because the answer is always going to be, I love this shit. <laughs> um, if you can say, hi, Mark, how's your Wednesday? Because I know the answer. He's having a fabulous Wednesday and a fabulous Thursday and a fabulous Tuesday. Um, I'm in a building at the, at the uh, market. I, uh, my store is in Daytona Flea and Farmers Market. There's 80 spots. There's about 65 vendors. I have almost the entire building now saying, happy Friday, happy Saturday, happy Sunday. Explain that, Mark. Explain that to everybody. Because people think I'm crazy when I say glad rising. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, mathematically, grand rising is correct, but they look at you like you're crazy. Okay. So, um, all right. I'm going to go through a little practice here in case you don't know this to kind of bring it to the... the your, con your, your, your consciousness, okay? So we have what we call a month and that month is made up of say 30 days, okay? In that 30 days, there's four what? What do they call them? Pick me, pick me, we. <laughs> okay. Now, here's a question. What's the opposite of weak? Strong. You've never thought of that, have you? Now, realize there are more deaths Monday morning than any other time of the week. And it's amplified the day after they change time, okay, because of our internal clock. But there are more deaths the first two hours of Monday morning than any other day, okay? Now, Monday morning, when's the only time you use the word morning? Funeral. Correct. <laughs> when someone At dies. A funeral. Okay. And you go you go to your work week to earn a living. What's an earn? <laughs> yes, exactly. You've never had these thoughts. Okay. Right. This is the how they have controlled us. This is the real magic of who we are. All right. When you realize everything is math, every word you have, you say, has a mathematical computation that goes along with it. When you realize everything is math. So when you, when you say something to somebody, realize what you're saying. Good morning. In other words, happy funeral. Okay? And then you work your work week to get to the week end. Okay. And we wonder why we're dying at 80 when our life expectancy is over 120. Well, we're programming it into our consciousness. And since that's all we are is consciousness, whatever it is we believe is true. Now, in case you're unaware of this fact, are you all aware of spontaneous remission? Do you know yep. what that is? All, all you lead, are you familiar with that or, or not? Christina, are you okay. You're talking about an illness, right? Spontaneous remission. Well, where... well, spontaneous remission is you're laying in the hospital dying of cancer. They come in in the morning and you have no cancer in your body. Right. Not you're healed. There is no cancer in the body. That's spontaneous remission. That is the human consciousness creating a healthy body. And it happens in a thought, okay? How, how about placebo effect? Mm -hmm. 
familiar with it? Okay, now, when you realize that every single trial they run, they have to take a group out of the control factor or control group because they heal. There is a certain percentage of the control group that always heals because of the placebo effect. They think it's the latest, greatest, their body heals exactly how they're told it happens. That means the human consciousness created a healthy body in a thought. That's because you're whatever God is. He gave us that ability. We're not separate from it. We're part of that system. There is only one thing. Whatever that is that God is, is what everything is. There's not a separation. Every single part of everything. Um, here you go. Here's one for you. Ready? <clears throat> I just came in contact with every single one of you. Because you were told that air is something it's not. Okay. Explain every that. Time, <laughs> every time you take a breath, it is connected to everything, including what's on the bottom of the ocean. And it's directly connected, and it has to do with magnetism has nothing to do with you needing oxygen. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you remind people that every single aspect of everything we've been told is a lie. Everything. And that it's been manipulated to take advantage of us. So what is it and how does it work? That's why as we're, we're learning stuff that science is saying is true. Everybody's been, oh, that doesn't work. Doesn't. Why? Because they were making money on something and they don't want you to know the truth. There is no money to be made in cures, only in treatment. This is a line that I use. I'm number one in Google, been in business for 10 years. I have warranted and guaranteed everything that I've ever done. The pharmaceutical industry has never warranted or guaranteed anything they've done in over 100 years, and practicing medicine is a legal term. All right? This is simply the reason. So is practicing law. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, and I tell people, doctors, doctors, healers heal. There's a difference. All right. Um, I really can't explain to you what I do because, of course, none of us have any idea what we are. All I know is I've never had a piece of jewelry returned in two months of me, 10 years. I've never had a piece of jewelry returned that was worn. I've had jewelry that was bought that the person passed away before they got it. I've never actually gotten something that's bad. Um, and there's a part of me that says, this is simply because we're dealing with the same thing that healers have always dealt with. Every healer you know has low self-esteem because we've been healers lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And Please understand, um, Salem witch hunts, that's not ancient history, okay? So for the history of our species, they've made people like me live on the outskirts of the village. And when your kids are sick, you bring them to me. And then when it doesn't rain for a year, you kill me because I'm a witch, right? That's what history has been, right? Okay, here's the difference. We entered the age of Aquarius. Does everybody know that? Right? Changed everything. Everything. All previous to that was 2,000 years of, I told you to practice controlling your thoughts. <laughs> yes, where we are now. Now you're going to realize if you didn't practice controlling your thoughts, uh, remember in the secret, what would happen if you had a thought of an elephant? Right. There's an elephant. Okay. Wait till the so, elephant happens. So what you're saying is that everything is manifesting much more quickly and much more easily. Wow. Um, and I think because because I'm understanding the attraction aspect of it better. Okay. There is no searching. Um, I, you know, we've knew things before we knew them. You know. You, you, you know, you discover as you go through life, wow, I always knew that. I just didn't know that I knew that, okay? Um, in my entire life, I'm 55 years old. I've never made a uh, phone call. I have never looked in a newspaper uh, to buy an automobile or to find a place to live. Every single one has come to me. 
This is ridiculous. All right. This is yeah. ridiculous. Okay. Explain no, the Portland trip. Explain how we met. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, without all the gory details, because really it was Audrey. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Metaphysics. Ready? Here we go. Um, um, are you all familiar with channeling? Do you follow any channeling? We okay. channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's only one channel that I was ever introduced to that I follow, and that's Cryon, K R Y O N, and yep. it's uh, Lee Carroll. Yep. Okay. Now I was introduced to 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 that in 2000. Okay. And what got me that that was the hook was in his first book at the end of the book he talked about the fact that before the next book was going to come out nasa was going to say the fact that the planet apparently had gone through uh, a meteor belt that we didn't know it was there but they all must have burnt up because if something hits the outer atmosphere they can tell because of a vibration there's a secondary level that they can tell when it goes through so this is why they can figure out where it's going to hit because the the, the differences between these two levels so Cryon in the book said that it was going to go through this outer level and it would not burn up here. There'd be no level here. So they would say it'd burn up on the outer atmosphere. So a couple months after the book was published, that's almost per beatum what NASA said. This was Cryon's explanation. Um, as a planetary energy, because we're measured as a unity, as one. Okay? So you're not individuals. I'm not an individual. We are playing a part of one. Okay, so that energy was measured and we chose to stay. So in doing so, entities came in to address the required changes for us to be able to raise our vibration. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with crying, the very first thing that group did was change the magnetic grid of the planet by 10 degrees. And if you want to go and do a little research, go back to 1989 and realize landing strips at airports have to do with the compass degrees. So if the planet changed by 10 degrees, how many airports had to change the numbers on the landing strip? So that's one of those things you can actually read and realize, holy smokes, how, did, and, and what we were explained was it allowed more light onto the planet, all right? So through the years, that's kind of been explained um, but in, in 22 years of listening to it, there's certain things that have stuck. And one of my favorite ones is this. Everything is about to change. And the biggest issue with your species is you have no idea what the word everything means. <laughs> oh, that is so true. That is so, so true. Okay. Because it's every aspect of everything. is a, it, it, And it is changing. Okay. So... Everything that has been placed out for our destruction is now being unwound, all right? So if we just look at it as where we are in this day and age, at this point in time, um, there's a lot, a lot of negative things that were in place that are being unwound, all right? Now, so that we can think about it as we're playing this as a part of one, so if there's 7 billion people on the planet playing the part of one, how do we do this to make it as mentally okay on everybody as possible? All right. So we've all been lied to. We've all been manipulated. We've all, okay. All of this is universal. So as the world starts making this change, how do we make sure it's okay for Heidi and Claire and Christina and, and Jeannie to get through it as good as you can between your ears. Realize no matter where you go, there you are. Okay. So that's the key is right here. Right. So how do you go about doing that? What's well, up to you? Because it's your world. Remember, you're inside that bubble. You're never outside that bubble. So little things I point out to people. Your brain is the most sophisticated quantum computer ever evolved. Your brain is incapable of forgetting. We can hypnotize you, bring you back to the moment of birth, and you can tell us the doctor's eye color. All right? 
the filing system gets messed up, which is why you'll be having a conversation and then go, um, um, tomorrow afternoon, it pops in your head. Okay. You remember it's the filing system, but your brain is incapable of forgetting. This should tell you, be careful what you put in your head because you can't get it out. All right. So I've explained it to people as we go along stuff, I will get to a certain point in a certain thing and I pull back because there's no requirement to put what's past that point inside of my reality. I get to a certain point and I realize this is bad. Anything by it past this is going to be even worse. There's no requirement for me to know that. Right. Um, in my business, I will have people come to me because this is what I am and they'll ask questions and I have a pat answer. Um, do you believe that your existence requires that information inside of you? Every single time I have put it that way, the answer is no. Good. There's no requirement for you to put that information in you, especially if you haven't built your way up to that. Okay. Um, so, um, so as an individual, and this is how I've learned to practice it. All right. Because we live in our heads. Now, um, ladies, your species is way better than my species. All right. Way strong. Okay. This is how I explain it. God invented man and went close. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, now, the thing about it, okay, and that, that, that's so funny because it's so true. All right. Um, one of the issues is, though, because your species is the one that keeps us alive, your brain, okay, is just. My species, we get up in the morning, we go out, we kill it, we bring it back, and we give it to you. You feed us, you to keep us clean, you, you, know, you do it. That's how simplistic we are. So it's easier for me to compartmentalize things than it's going to be for you. All right. And if you don't know this, I'm going to put this in a way that you can truly understand it. So you really understand. Okay. If you took a, a man's head and you cut the top off and you look on the inside, it's full of individual boxes, all right? And they don't touch. And when a man decides to do something, he reaches and he pulls out a single box, he opens it up and he plays with whatever is inside that box. When he's done, he puts it back in the box, folds it up and puts it back exactly where he got it, okay? Our favorite box, the one we'll go to anytime we can is the nothing box, okay? The thing when women go, you can't just do nothing. And not only can we, it's our favorite box. Okay. Now that really is how men work in case you don't know this. Okay. Now, on the other hand, there's your half of the species. So if you cut the top of your head off and you look inside, it's like spaghetti and everything is connected to everything. It's like, what am I going to do tomorrow? What I got to wear? What is she going to say? What color are they? And it's continuous. It's so bad. You can wake up in the middle of the night and do this all the way to the bathroom and all the way back to bed. It's how different we are, okay? It's our greatest strengths, which can be used against us. Our species' greatest strength is empathy. That's how they've controlled us. There's no empathy in them. They have used our greatest gift to control us since the beginning. Mark. Who is the they? You referred to they a number of times. So in your opinion, who is they? Oh, are you sure you want to ask this question? <laughs> yeah. Are we going to go down a rabbit hole? <laughs> well, I, I just jumped back. Um, when I talk about things, okay, I'm a researcher. So when I talk about things, if you take notes, you can go back and do the same research. So this is just as an example, all right? If you go back to the book of Genesis, any Bible, realize there's two lineages in that book of Genesis. One starts with Adam, one starts with Cain. Why? Because Cain's father was not Adam, okay? So since the very beginning, the Jews, which have lineage, which have kept the records all the way back, because they know that other half of our species is not us. 
This is how they've been able to do the things they've been able to do and not blink an eye on it because there is no empathy in them. They look like us, they act like us, they are not us. Their father is not our father. Okay. Because Cain killed Abel and there was no empathy there. Correct. Okay. And here's the thing. If you look, if you look at it, you'll realize they don't go to our schools. They don't teach us how money works. Okay. So when you realize, even in this day and age, we were told years ago, when you discover what Harvard, Yale, Columbia, what that stuff is, you're going to shit because you think they're colleges. But you think what they send you to is a college. So when you discover what the different, you're not going to, I mean, it's going to blow your mind because they don't teach us what they teach their children. All right. Um, do you remember, um, I think it was under Obama. Cause I, yeah, it must've been under Obama, a seven year old girl or a seventh grade year old, a seventh grade girl doing a uh, background on the presidents and the fact that they all led back to a King of England every single one of them except two except two okay except two. so if you think about that what are those chances no there's more to this and and that's how old it is so um you know we were we were told so we could wrap, wrap our heads around it okay um I'm originally from Green Bay. Right next to Green Bay is the Oneida Reservation. When they got casinos, they started planning seven generations out. So everything, the first thing they did is they built a clinic. Then they built a daycare. Then they built a school. Then they built a technical college. Okay. They're looking out seven generations. We don't know what we're doing for dinner. Okay. Chinese and that, that that ancestry a thousand years out. We don't know what we're doing tomorrow. This is how far ahead of us they have always been. The thing is something changed because we're having these discussions. Okay, so that's something has changed. Um, so as far as where we are energetically wise, okay, with the age of Aquarius, coming into a full effect, this is what it feels like to me. It feels like a large cotton ball supporting you. That's it. That's it. It's simply loving me with no pressure points because I can't be wrong. I'm just going to give off an energy that it's going to support. There's no judgment. Okay. It's what would I like to experience? So in the age of Aquarius, that's all it is. It's simply going to love you back by giving you the experiences you desire, which is what we give off in our head. All right. Um, so what I did before about this is great. Okay, let's do the other one. So what if something presents itself into your world you would prefer not to repeat? Become a duck. You know, quack, quack, duck. Let it roll off your water or off your back, like the water off the back of a duck. Simply walk through it. Give it no energy. It's the energy you give it that gives it the ability to repeat back into your existence. All right? So when something comes up to present itself, just walk through it. And then as quickly as you can, get yourself excited about something and go, man, I can't wait till that happens. Offset that. Okay, because you're creating the world you're going to walk into it and you're going to do it whether you do this or not. So why not do it consciously if we're already doing this? Okay, because because again, we are what we are. Why not simply choose to have an outcome that I desire over another outcome? Okay, it doesn't make it better or worse. I've just discovered you know, once you eat enough lobster, it tastes like soap. So there isn't a wrong. Well, listen, it isn't so great for the lobster either. <laughs> right. So, you know, so what would you, what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Okay. Then in this energy, 
Um, we get what we want by helping. It's what goes out that comes back, right? Um, I tell people in my business, the farther I stay away from little green pieces of paper, the more little green pieces of paper are in my wallet at the end of the work week. It's astounding. It is absolutely astounding. Right. Okay. There, because what it is, is it's a side effect of what you do. All right. So I'm in the healing arts. So when somebody walks up in front of my booth, right on the sign, it says got pain. Okay. The first words out of my world, my mouth are, I don't produce jewelry. Jewelry doesn't come with lifetime guarantees and 30 day guarantees. I produce a portable magnetic field that you wear. All right. And about 80% of people feel better than they did within five minutes. All right. And as I explain to people, if you hurt and then you don't, I get to meet your friends. All right. Uh, it's we're hardwired to tell our friends about stuff we discover. That's it. All right. Um, I've been doing this for a decade now. And a couple of months back, I had a person and I just loved it. A non-spiritual person. She said, you know what you should do? You should just put the jewelry on them and then answer their questions. So from the spiritual point of view, it's like ask them their issue, address the issue, fall into your Buddha belly and say, what would you like to know that you currently don't? Um, my greatest gift is being able to answer a question that's asked. It, it's really freaky because it doesn't mean I have the answer before it's asked. I just know where the answers are kept. Make sense? Because okay. again, it's already, for you to have the idea to ask the question, that is already in the ether along with the answer to it. I can access that to pull that out. That's channeling. We all have that ability, yeah. right? Uh, I was told at a very young age, it's one of my greatest gifts. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a young man, his father brought him to me and he was talking blah, blah, blah. And I said, so you're 15 years old. What do you, he's had, his father's having some issues with him like every other 15 year old boy. And uh, I said, so what do you want to do when you grow up? He said, I want to go in the army. I said, no, you don't. You want to be a mechanic. You, you want to be a diesel mechanic. And you he just went, woof. How did you know that? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> Within a couple of minutes, you could see the change in him. He realized, hey, your father and I simply know things that you don't currently know. But at your age, you have to be bulletproof and know everything because that's where you are in your existence. For you to be able to make the change and go into what you have to do, you have to believe you can do anything in your bulletproof. As you become less young, you'll realize, oh, they really did know things we didn't know. And I said, all I did was pull out the number one potential. And because you've been putting so much energy into it, it was easy to see because that was the one that was pushing it up against the bubble. And all I did is pulled it out of the ether. Here's the thing. You don't know what the ether is and you have no idea what a potential is. But when you're as old as your dad, you will. This is what we're all here for. Because we're just playing a part of one. Right? So for each individual to simply be the joyful, loving... Um, I think we were probably all told and taught the same thing. That love is the highest vibration. All right? According to Dr. Omoto, with the water studies, it's water. it has to do with love and gratitude. That blend is even a higher vibration than love itself. Okay? Um, my grandmother said this my whole life. Your attitude creates your altitude. Okay? Because it's not what happens to you. It's about what you said happened to you. All right. So it's not what's going on around us. It's about how we choose to respond to it. Okay. And all it is, is a backdrop. So a way that you can wrap your head around it. If 22 years ago, you stopped watching TV, how would your world be different right now than it is right now? 
besides not having any of that information. The only thing your world would be different right now is you'd walk outside and go, wow, there sure seems to be a lot of people wearing masks. Okay? Think about it. Uh, down here, I tell people the, the gas record in Florida was $4.09. It went up to $4.30 or something. It's back down under four. And I said, so think about it. Two years of fear, 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 right? Everything that you don't know about, you can't see, you can't smell, is going to kill you. Fear, 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 okay? And your gas is all the way up to where it was 10 years ago. Huh? Okay. Before any of this stuff started, I was paying $3.99 a pound for portobello mushrooms. You know how much I pay for portobello mushrooms, though? Three dollars and ninety-nine cents. That's probably because it doesn't have to rain where you are. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. Eat, eat, eat the food that's grown where you are. That helps. Yes. Okay. But what? Again, how much of it is simply be energetic based to get you to think a certain way, to give off an energy that's being used by the side you don't actually like. Right. So once I started to understand that energy is. And it really is an energy. You think of gasoline is an energy, right? Electricity is an energy. So your conscious thought is an actual energy. Not only is it an actual energy, it creates every single thought. They tell us the average individual has 60,000 thoughts a day. Every single one of them is an energy. So how do you respond to what it is you think you're seeing? Because it's going to create the world that you wander into, right? So once I started to realize this, I realized, wow, you mean, yes, it's just an even exchange of energy. That's all it is, all right? So I realized if I was going to make my life the way I wanted it. Number one, I was told at a very young age that work is a four letter word. Not supposed to use four letter words, all right? So work is nobody, wait, nobody grows up and goes, I love to work. No, no, you need money because we don't grow our own food. We work to produce a little green piece of paper that we exchange for our food, okay? That's why we work. If you didn't have to have a little green piece of paper, I'll guarantee you wouldn't go to work tomorrow. You, you would do something else. Okay. So in my world, I realized, well, that doesn't seem to be right. Okay. Because what happens if you think you need something? Oh, that's right. You'll set up the environment to make sure you need it. You can exchange. Okay. So I disconnected from it. And then I focused on what is my greatest joy? which I believe is where we are all heading. As a species on this planet, it will not be that long when every individual realize your part is to do your heart's desire. That's what you're here for. When we all do it, it comes together just like this. Not everybody wants a red Mercedes Benz. Everybody's different. When you do what your design, what your heart's desire, it will just mesh right with everything else. So what I realized is if I simply attempted to be the best me, which I, I fix things, which isn't the correct verbiage for 5D. <laughs> okay, it works for 3D, but it doesn't work for 5D. Um, but I have the ability to, to somehow bring things to the surface so that other people can perceive their own versions of it to make choices that were different than they realized before. Because I can't do anything for another individual. I can set up an environment that you can see and decide to make another choice. You might blame that on me, but it has nothing to do with you. You just use me as an excuse to do something other than what you did before. And that's what we are for each other. We, I can't, we can't, you can't do it for me. Um, you cannot make me angry. Now, you can do something. I can use it as an excuse to get angry over. I can even blame it on you, but it has nothing to do with you. It only has to do with the fact that I decided to get angry and I chose to blame it on you. 
There's no direct correlation there. You don't have that power over me. I hate that. <laughs> right? But that's the game that we get to play. Okay. And then I realized the happier I am, the better everything goes. Um, and the reason is because it's an energy. Now, I'm 55 years old. I live on the ocean. When I say I live on the ocean, if I walk to the backside of my house, I can throw a baseball into the ocean from my patio. All right. Um, and this is how I end up living here. When I came back from uh, Oregon, I had planned on moving back to the beach. And as I always say, you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Okay. So I pull into town. I call up a friend of mine and he brings up my last roommate that I lived out here with and he wasn't doing well. So I ended up moving in with him for a year. A year later, he's doing well. And he says, you know, I'm doing great. If you wanted to move back to the beach, I was like, yes, I'm going back to the beach because I know how my life works. Okay. So two days later, I go over to my daughter's and I said, I'm getting ready to move. I'd like to move into this area here. And she looks at me and she goes, you're not going to believe this. Oh, no, you'll believe this. Two days ago, my next door neighbor came over. He lost his roommate and he can't afford to live here by himself. Two days or three days later, I moved in. I never filled out an application. The last house I rented here, the application was 11 pages long. Okay, it's Florida, it's camp, okay? So to just be able to move into place, and I live next to my 31-year-old daughter and my eight-year-old grandson. Nah, can't explain that. How does it get any better than that? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that response. <laughs> um, so, so once I started to realize that I simply produce the world that I live in and everything else is just a backdrop, okay? And then I realized, you mean the happier I am, the better the people do around me? Yes, because they're living in the energy that I give off, okay? Um, the word selfish, we were told this incorrectly. The word selfish actually means to take care of oneself first. So if it was taught to us to be selfish, to take care of ourselves first, we would realize that with our abundance over and above what is required for us, we can give it to anybody and it doesn't affect us. Our cup runneth over and everybody can have the excess. Okay, that's to take care of oneself first. But we're taught to do things for other people, which never works, to give to other people, which never works. Okay, because we're not allowed to do something inside of somebody else's bubble. Remember, my bubble's mine. Now I can choose to change something inside of mine. I might even use you as, as an excuse of why I did it. Because you did something I never thought of doing. And by me seeing it, I go, I can do that. And then I change that reality inside of my bubble. And I simply did it because I saw you doing it. And that's how we changed the world. All right. Um, I'm just going to break in here. Does anybody have any questions for Mark? We, Mark, we normally go till quarter after. Um, but anybody so we're have super close to the end. being shy today. <laughs> Let's see. You answered a lot of mine. We're you know what? Um, oh, is, go ahead. You know, you're raising your hand or no. Okay. So um, on your website, there you wrote the game of life takes more than one person to play correct Can you just say a little bit more about that um almost almost all science all ancient writings including the bible had to do with two separate individuals okay now i'll explain it a little different okay you are so precise that we can take one of your dna which has a measurable magnetic field. And on a planet of 7 billion people, we can go, that one is mom and that one is dad, okay? 
inside of your DNA, you are 100% of your mother. You are 100% of your father. To the point that when they die, you will get a download of this life from your parents. Most people don't know that. This is why all ancients, they open up their prayers with thanking their ancestors. Why? Because they are their ancestors. Okay? Now, that's one of your DNA. You are made up of trillions of overlapping DNA. Your actual magnetic field is six meters across. That's 25 feet. That's how big your actual magnetic field is. All right? Now, what? Okay, I'm gonna I'll keep it shallow, but this is like modern science. Um, think of magnetism. There is no definition for it. They can tell you what a magnet can do. They don't know what it is. Gravity. They can tell you what it does. They don't know what it is. And what they've told you about light, light, your entire lie or life has been a lie, and I can prove it. They told you light goes on forever. That's why you could be standing out watching the stars, and one of the stars goes out, and that may have burnt out two hundred thousand years ago bunk okay we immediately years ago proved that human consciousness changes light from a wave to a particle simply by observing it okay and if that was actually the truth what they were telling you your flashlight would work across the street okay now the reason i point this out is magnetism gravity and light are all three quantum energy forms if you take magnetism and gravity, you can bend light. If you take light and magnetism, you can bend gravity. Light and gravity, you can bend magnetism. All right? Now, your DNA is quantum. I know, I'm trying to keep it shallow. I'm trying to keep it shallow, Claire. Okay? Your consciousness is quantum. All right? Now, what happens, like in my world, if we take a magnetic field and lay it on the DNA and the quantumness of your consciousness. Well, light and gravity bends magnetism, right? This is quantum entanglement at its finest. This is literally reconnecting us back to what is, all right? On the three-dimensional, if every single cell of your body has a magnetic field and they flip, if it gets damaged or old, it gets out of sync. When it gets out of sync, it produces a heat that creates an inflammation that we feel is pain. For some reason, we put on an exterior magnetic field. It reinforces it, gets them to line back up, which reduces the heat that we feel is inflammation or pain. So this is the level that we can play at. Here's the thing. It's like most healers can't heal themselves. Okay, you have to go to enough why. There's something about when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also. So there is a magic that happens in that meeting, okay, that is almost unexplainable in what we think of as our reality. Because it is not the three-dimensional thing that it is. It is the connection of all that is in that meeting. This is why you can meet somebody for a moment have an interaction, walk away, and you can feel the top phone chakra of your head. It's wide open. You only said two or three words. To that. Who was that person? No. Who were you two together? Right? Okay. So again, each and every individual is playing a game. But when we come into contact with other individuals, and the rule of thumb is higher vibration wins. Okay? Do vibrations come in? This one either has to come up to match it or it has to leave. Okay, so if you want protection, hold your vibration up here. All the shit you don't want to happen is down here. They can't even see you. Okay, um, if you want to have fun one time when you're really in a good mood, go to a Walmart and walk around. Just be careful because they're going to hit you with their carts. They're going to walk in. They won't even know you're there. If you want to play a vibrational game, Walmart's a good place to play it because the vibration is so low. It's easy to see the difference between you and the people around you. So if you really want to go in and play a vibrational game, it's a great place to go. Just be careful. They're just going to run right into you. They don't even know you're there. Okay. So this is how come we're never in danger. Okay. You can't be hurt. You're literally not in the same realm they are. They don't even know we're here. Okay. Um, at work continuously. If I leave my booth. Now, 
I'm in a building that has 80 stores, all right? If I leave my booth and I'm not whistling, I get yelled at. Why? Because I scare everybody. I'm standing like where we are this close, uh, uh, like this, before, and then I'll go. And when I do that, it draws their attention to me, and then they yell at me for not whistling because I scared the crap out of them and I'm only two feet in front of them. Because I walk around in a high vibration, because I'm me, okay, and I walk up, and they don't know I'm there until I draw their attention to me, and then I scare the snot out of them because we're only a couple feet apart, okay? That's a fun game, okay? Because if you play games like this, you realize, wow, if we can actually do this, what else can we do? Right? Because, again, it's a um, – so – if there's one thing I, I would ask everybody to try to do, number one, love yourselves more, okay? Since the very beginning of time, okay, there's never been one of you. When you choose to leave this world, there will never be another one of you, okay? And you change the trajectory of every single person you come in contact with. I'll prove it. You pull in the gas station one day and you forget your phone. On the other side, the guy's getting ready to leave, and you go, excuse me, um, what time is it? I forgot my phone. He goes, oh, no problem. He reaches in his car, pulls his phone off, and he goes, it's such and such a time. You have no comprehension because very, sin very seldom do we get to see how it actually connects. The reason you forgot your phone was to interrupt that guy. That guy will be 15 seconds late <clears throat> for the rest of his life. You have no idea. Tomorrow afternoon, he was going to be at an intersection that a truck was going to run that intersection. And because he's 15 seconds late, he goes through that and nothing happened. This is how intricate we are to everything that happens and we seldom ever get to see it. That's how special you are. So why would you want to be anything other than who you are? All right. Well, that is a wonderful note to wind down on. Thank you so much, Mark. We have enjoyed, I've been watching everyone's faces and I think that we feel full and um, grateful for your presence and all that you've had to say. Um, you're all playing your parts. Yes. <laughs> we're, all, we're, all, we're all doing the exact same thing. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a part of God, yeah. right? So as long as it's just a part, have more fun. You don't have to, but it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> it's a lot more fun, right? And again, so it's just a thought, you know, is the cap, cup half full or half empty? No, the cup is refillable. Okay, we can think anything we want, okay? So, you know, enjoy yourself more. And then watch it happen. And, you know, if you really want to get back at them bastards, have a great time. They hate that. <laughs> they hate that. <laughs> so thank you, ladies. This was very enjoyable. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Mark, one of the things that we usually end doing is a 68 seconds of a circle. And sure. um, Claire and I, thought actually it was Claire's idea is to put you in the middle of our circle today and just to to send you the highest blessings the highest frequency for oh, your highest good. would that be something that you would be would you would receive that. <laughs> I, that. I tell people you're raised by a mechanical electrical engineer I'm excited <laughs> to know yeah. and I'm sure you get the significance of 68 seconds if not I'm sure yeah. Claire can fill you in on that but you seem to be extremely, extremely knowledgeable. So you're probably already there. All right. So um, thank you for letting us give to you or offer to you. And um, is everybody ready for 68 seconds? All right. I'm going to. You muted yourself, Heidi. I just said I was going to mute the line so we can all have nice and <laughs> a nice, quiet focus. OK. Take a deep breath. Make sure you're grounded and you're in your body. And then just begin to send the highest level frequency you can to um, this beautiful man, this beautiful presence who has contributed to us today. All right, begin.
Okay, that was our 68 seconds. <laughs> All right, so if you would like to unmute, you're welcome to do that. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, Mark, there's a little microphone. You, you got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Mark. I have shared your website with the ladies here. And if it would be okay with you, I'd love to promote you to my list. Um, I don't know what that what will do, but um, you are very open to receive. So I would love to promote you in that way, if that's okay with you. Yes. Um, um, also, um, I think you can contact me through this thing. My phone number should be somewhere or Claire can get it to you. If, um, I'm number one on Google. I do not answer my phone, but if you leave a message, I'll get right back to you. And then I put your name in my phone. Okay. Um, okay. As if, if I was at work, I explained it this way. I point at my case and say, this is what pays my bills. And then I point at you people and say, this is what I'm on the planet for. <laughs> so are you, are you saying that you're available to us for questions or anything? Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, oh, it's, it's, Mark, it's, are, are you okay with me putting your contacts up in the, in the chat then? Yes. Yes. That'd be just fine. Thank um, you. Yeah. Because we're all, we're all playing the part of one. So I fully understand if I can help somebody, it's the most selfish thing I can do because you guys <laughs> are me. Okay. Right. right. So it, it, right. So it's like, you know, the, the saying of treat your neighbor as yourself. Well, how different would our world be if we realized they were us? Exactly. Right. Would there be war? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful thought. And I hear you like banana splits. So <laughs> there may be something coming your way to contribute to your banana split fund. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, when, when you tell people everything that I want is drawn to me, the funny thing is, you know, we were told you'll have everything that you need. That doesn't mean you'll have everything you want, but it's amazing when you decide to want the things that are beneficial for you, how many of the things you get that you want. All right. So I move in here and what opens three blocks away from me on the ocean, a top of the line ice cream parlor. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, with some of the best ice cream, I mean, the, the good old fashioned, and it's like, of course, I can't believe it's only it's all it's three whole blocks away. Normally, it's next door. So, but yeah, um, you have to walk off that banana split, Mark. I get to live vicariously. He sends pictures sometimes. They're nice. amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but uh, uh, my mother used to explain it to me this way. Um, I used to post a lot on Facebook. Um, I lost both of my parents the last couple of years, but she would say, I can live vicariously through your pictures. Yeah. Okay. So I would put, you know, because my, my parents had great life. So, that, you know, traveling and all this kind of stuff. And I realized over time, not everybody feels that way. Because if you get up every single morning and you hate your life, it won't be long and you're going to hate my guts. Mm. Because I'm showing you how freaking miserable your existence is every day when you get up and I show you a new sunrise. Right? But or then you're there's... cranky and you ask Mark how he is and he says, I love this shit. You're like, oh my God, Jim. <laughs> um, but, it, but it also gives you the chance, okay, to interact however it is we decide to, yes. right? So once I really came to understand, no matter where I go, there I am, and 100% of everything is my fault. So suck it up, Buttercup. If I don't like it, you better make a different decision next time. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so thus, you know, I get to meet wonderful people like you, simply being who we are right. and reinforcing the fact that we're not alone. Okay, because there is no time, there is no distance, right? Right. So when you realize, yeah, we're playing this part of whatever this is, and we've won. Hmm. We've won. And how do we know this? Listen to them. Their lips continually tell you what's not true. Mm -hmm. Right? We've won. So, so as I tell my friends, as your life gets better and better, get used to it. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. As life gets better and better, get used to it. Oh. Thank I'll you. Write that one down. All right, Mark, thank you. Thank you, thank Claire, you, first, you, for taking care of the details and setting this up. Yes. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Big love to you all. We will see you in two weeks. And um, yeah, as life gets better and better, just get used to it. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> Bye nice for now. You all. Have a great night. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. I don't know.